Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome aboard the Strasbourg Railroad. This is train number 100, the Peckway Valley, departing at 1 p.m. for Fairview, S. Ben Shade, Cherry Hill, Groffs Grove, Carpenters Bylers Crossing, Lehman Place Junction, and Paradise, Pennsylvania. If you happen to not be going to any of those destinations, I'm sorry to tell you that you found yourself aboard the wrong train. As you can see, we are a very old but also very safe railroad, so we ask for your cooperation in following some basic safety rules so we can all enjoy our trip and most importantly, return home safely. First off, keep all heads, hands, arms, and small children inside the cars at all times. There are some obstructions and close clearances along our line, and we want no one injured as a result of reaching out or getting hit by them. Second, if you choose to open our window during your ride with us here today, please make sure that it's securely held with the metal friction latch to avoid those very heavy windows from crashing down on your fingers. Third and most important of all, once we are moving down the rails of history, we ask that you do not move from car to car while the train is in motion, and I'm sorry, but you can't ride on those end platforms. We are all about safety at the railroad, and making sure that you're not moving between those cars is of utmost importance to us. Eating and drinking is permitted on board, if you've brought any trash with you today, please make sure it goes into the nearby receptacles and not out into the fields. Last, but not least, there is no smoking permitted anywhere and anytime on board this train. Our locomotive hauling you today is steam-powered and will handle all the smoking we need today. The route over which you'll be traveling today is one of the oldest railroad rights of way in the entire world, given to the Strasbourg Railroad Company by an act of the Pennsylvania Legislature way back on June 9, 1832, meaning that we've been serving the community of Strasbourg for well over a century and a half. This is not an enterprise that sprang up overnight, many generations of passengers have boarded our coaches before you folks joined us here today. We should be departing here within the next minute or two, so please take your seats, get comfortable, and all aboard for paradise. Ladies and gentlemen, what you see around you is not for show. Right now, you're passing through a working rail yard. These tracks help us transport lumber, grain, steel, and biofuels to regional businesses, but there was a time when you didn't hear our steam whistle at all. By 1957, our rails and equipment were in pretty bad shape, and with no one to manage operations, it looked like our story was about to end. Our rescue would come a year later when 24 dedicated railroad buffs decided to put down their own money and labor to save this short line from abandonment. Every nickel of profit was put back into the railroad, which eventually funded enough to purchase our very first steam locomotive. Our mechanical shop located to your running right is nationally recognized for its expertise in steam locomotive repair and restoration, and we're proud to say that it has benefited a handful of railroads and museums all over the country. With the talent used right here, we rekindle a love of old-time railroading.
My friends, you are about to embark on a passage that's been shared by more than eight generations of travelers. This is one of the oldest railroad rights of way in the entire world, and it's located right in the heart of Lancaster County. It all began in 1832, when the Pennsylvania legislature chartered the Strasburg Railroad, allowing the construction of this four and a half mile long stretch of track, which we call a short line. That would allow this piece of Pennsylvania Dutch country to connect with the mighty Philadelphia and Columbia Railroad. The locomotive hauling this train right now will burn up to a half ton of coal during this round trip, all hands shoveled by our firemen into a 2000 degree firebox. It's exactly that kind of hard work and backbone that's helped this railroad survive more than a few hard turns. And if you're wondering about the speed of our trains, it is a fairly simple matter. The oldest timetable we've ever found for our line was in the Strasbourg B newspaper, dated August of 1852. We still follow that same basic schedule today, so I can tell you that we're traveling at a comfortable speed that's under 60 miles per hour. Preparing one of our steam engines for their daily service is not as simple as turning the ignition key, one locomotive alone can take up to six hours to fire up properly. This is done by gradually raising the temperature inside the firebox to increase steam pressure in the boiler, it's a process known as hustling. Our staff will also provide a full inspection of the locomotive, lubricate a multitude of working parts, and ensure the tender is filled with enough coal and water for the day's journey.
Do you believe in ghosts? I can tell you that I sure do. You see, many years ago in the valley to your running right, there used to be a narrow gauge railroad, the Lancaster, Oxford and Southern. We used to call her, little old and slow. The railroad was abandoned in 1918, and the scrappers took up the rails so quickly that they stranded old number six out on the line with no way to get back. Sometimes, when we blow our whistle for Carpenter's Crossing, the ghost of old number six will answer us back. Now, listen closely, maybe she'll answer us today. Did someone say echo? Why, we pay that ghost $27.50 a day just to do that for us. That makes her the highest paid employee on our railroad. Nobody ever seen that ghost, but somebody keeps cashing those paychecks. Friends, right now we're approaching Strasbourg's only bridge, the Pumpkinville Turnpike Bridge. If you don't mind, we ask you to lift your feet. It takes the much needed weight off these cars as we cross. This bridge recently replaced an older one in 2011 to accommodate the railroad's growing stream of incoming freight traffic. Actually, the real reason that the bridge was replaced was due to an Amish farmer's complaints about his mules scraping their sides and hitting their heads. The bridge is now more than six mules wide and high enough that the mules no longer need to wear a safety helmet. We are now approaching Lehman Place Junction, where the short line of Strasbourg meets the main line of Amtrak, which, way back in its heyday, used to belong to the mighty Pennsylvania Railroad. We established the connection here with the completion of our own railroad in 1851. Our track will begin to curve sharply to the left as we come alongside Amtrak's Keystone Corridor from Philadelphia to Pittsburgh. In fact, those very rails made up the original route of the before-mentioned Philadelphia and Columbia Railroad, which was absorbed by the Pennsylvania Railroad in 1857. Where the white buildings stand today once stood Henry Lehman's Hotel. Believe it or not, in the earliest days of railroading, railroad cars and carriages were pulled by horses. Henry Lehman would supply fresh horses for the trains and refreshments for passengers. 
The interchange track on the running right is used to deliver freight cars off the main line into our East Strasbourg yard, where shipments are offloaded to trucks for local delivery. The most famous delivery to come through Lehman Place arrived on February 22, 1861, when President-elect Abraham Lincoln made a short stop in Lancaster County on the way to his Washington inauguration. Thousands gathered around these tracks just to see a glimpse of Mr. Lincoln, who stepped out, faced the crowd, and said, I've come to see you and let you see me. I believe I have the better of the bargain. Sadly, in 1865, another train would pass through Lehman Place, but in the opposite direction, this one carrying President Lincoln's body after his untimely death at the hands of John Wilkes Booth. Ladies and gentlemen, we have now arrived at our destination of Paradise, Pennsylvania, located along Route 30 in eastern Lancaster County. We'll be here for just a few minutes while we switch our locomotive around to the opposite end of our train for the return trip. There are 21 working farms along this route, many of them owned by Amish families. I'm sure many of you saw at least one horse-drawn buggy on your way to visit our railroad today, well you won't be surprised if I told you that they're sourced from these very farm stables. There are about 32,000 Amish people in the eastern half of this region. Their German and Swiss ancestors immigrated to Pennsylvania as early as the 18th century, and they devoutly practiced a simple life. Pennsylvania Dutch country is the fertile farmland of the plain people. They believe in faith and hard work with limited reliability and modern conveniences. The average Amish farm is about 80 acres in size. They raise dairy cattle and provide produce of corn, wheat, rye, soybean, barley, and the famous Lancaster County broadleaf tobacco. But if you think they stopped farming long ago, then think again. There are more than 2,000 Amish-owned businesses in this area, many earning their income from carpentry, painting, plumbing, and masonry. But no matter the profession, home is the center of all Amish life and events. Even church services, which can have as many as 200 attendants, are held inside Amish homes.
We're closing in on our return to Strasbourg, so I encourage you to take a good look outside. Today, you traveled through 2,500 acres of beautiful Lancaster County farmland. We're known as the garden spot because of our naturally rich soil and remain the most productive, non-irrigating farm county in the United States. There's now a fair show of livestock in these farms as I'm sure you can now hear. Each year, our farmers produce chicken for 3.6 million people, eggs for 9 million people, and milk for 10.6 million people. Anyone want to take a guess as to how many cows work on the average dairy farm? If you guessed less than 40, you're a bit low. An average Lancaster dairy farm has 65 cows and uses up to 1 million pounds of water. These rich pastures are very important to us. Lancaster County maintains one of the best farmland preservation programs in the United States, there are about 80,000 acres of these hardy green belts protected, and we're proud to do our part in supporting the Lancaster Farmland Trust. We want the next generation to enjoy these sights and sounds, just as we hope you have today. We do offer other experiences here at the railroad alongside the average steam-powered train ride you've experienced today. Thomas the Tank Engine, along with good friends Percy and Sir Topham Hatt, pay us a visit three times a year to greet little engineers and treat them to a special train ride. Please be sure to check our events calendar for more information on Thomas the Tank Engine and other unique events here at the Strasbourg Railroad. Well folks, this is the last stop for this train, East Strasbourg Station. We hope that you've enjoyed this journey on America's oldest short line. Be sure to take some time to talk with our railroad staff. Our conductors, engineers, and redcaps are always happy to share their expertise and answer your questions, and before you leave us today, I'd recommend paying a visit to our gift shops and cafe, and maybe catch a show on the Town Square stage. On behalf of all of us here at the Strasbourg Railroad, we thank you for taking the time to visit and share our love of old-time railroading in beautiful Lancaster County.